Evening, mortals. Thor here to tell you about Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and bring you up the speed on Batman and Robin, which you're about to watch. Now, we did a take earlier, and it went for like seven minutes, and the Academy got really mad at me, something about budget and time constraints, so I gotta wrap this up quicker. All right, so the first Batman movie comes out in 89, and Batman, uh, Joker is like this crime guy, and, and he's gonna, he wants to get after his crime balls, kill him. Point is, Batman causes Joker, and Joker causes Batman. Ooh, that's the conundrum, that's the whole thing there. And Batman ends up basically killing Joker at the end, but it's an accident, whatever. Um, the only good thing I think that really came out of that Batman movie was the car. It looked kind of sleek and like a Corvette, but 1989, uh, technology being what it was, Batman can't move his head because of his cowl. Not a problem Thor has. Half the time I don't even need to wear my helmet. Um, and it was just it was just kind of alright, but then again, Thor was in fifth grade at the time, so Thor thought it was okay. And, you know, the fight choreography is bad. At one point, there's a guy coming at Batman with, like, knives and sticks like this, and Batman literally just holds his hand out and the guy walks into his hand, but let that be what it is. So Batman's parents, you know, Bruce Wayne, you guys know the deal, the origin, how he becomes the same thing, except it's Joker, when he, before he was the Joker that killed Batman's parents. That That's the thing, and it was Michael Keaton as Batman, so Beetlejuice and Mr. Mom plays Batman, and, and Jack Nicholson as the Joker, and that's really it. Kim Basinger's in there just for eye candy, if you like that sort of thing. And Alfred's the only actor that stays well in the movies. Brings us to Batman Returns, right? They're like, let's milk it a little bit more. Michael Keaton's still Batman, Danny DeVito, who looks like a penguin, plays the penguin. He's got the height, he's got the shape. And Michelle Pfeiffer, who was supposed to be Kim Basinger's role in the first movie, they use her as Catwoman in this one because she was dating Michael Keaton and decided uh, they didn't want to do it. So that's Batman Returns. Joker wants, or Joker, Penguin wants to be accepted into like high society and be accepted by Gotham, whatever. And Catwoman's there because Christopher Walken, who's her boss, kills her for some reason. She falls in a dumpster and gets the powers of cats, including being able to live nine times. She actually like dies multiple times in the movie. Stupid. So that's Batman Returns. Was it good? Was it bad? I don't know. It, it was 1991, I guess, so good or bad is kind of arbitrary. Again, I think I was like in sixth grade at the time, so I just kind of went with it. Brings us to Batman Forever. Uh, they got rid of Michael Keaton. They brought in Val Kilmer before he discovered donuts and bacon, so Val Kilmer fit the suit still. You know, I don't know if anyone saw a recent Val Kilmer, but he's not the same. Uh, who's, who else is in it? Got, uh, not, not, um, Nicole Kidman plays a psychiatrist again for no reason. They just needed a girl in the movie. And our villains are the Riddler and Two-Face. And Two-Face, Harvey Dent, was played by Billy D. Williams in the first Batman movie, played by Tommy Lee Jones in this one. So I'll let you make that connection, or lack thereof. And Riddler's played by Jim Carrey. He was popular at the time. Two-Face kills... Uh, attacks a bunch of people at a circus, kills the parents of a gymnast who is Dick Grayson, who becomes Robin, who's Chris O'Donnell, and so now this motorcycle enthusiast gymnast is suddenly an unstoppable crime fighter along with Batman, so be it. Chris O'Donnell's in the movie we're going to see tonight. So they takes out Riddler, takes out Two-Face, they got on this kick of using two villains because the movie wasn't enough to carry itself as it was, so that's, throw, that's just throwing everything but the kitchen sink. Well, they threw in the kitchen sink, the wrecked parks, the water fountain, and Logan Square across the street in this movie. Batman and Robin is... What can I say about Batman and Robin? They, we got George Clooney, he's just come off of like doing cameos on Roseanne, and now he's Batman suddenly. We got Chris O'Donnell back as Robin, Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dr. Freeze, and we've got uh, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy. That's the cast. You couldn't make that up. That is what we've got to deal with. So they changed the actors in the later Batman movies, not something you'll be seeing happening with Thor 2. I want to mention. And Batman and Robin just, I don't know if it intended to make fun of itself or knew where it was going. It was going up against Lost World, Jurassic Park the same like month or even the same weekend. So they were up against another big budget supposed blockbuster and they were just really riding the coattails of what they thought Batman was going to do. So this is Batman and Robin for better or worse. I don't know if it hits all the marks it wanted and I don't know if it really justifies you guys even being here, but you're about to watch it. Good luck with that. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm coming. All right, all right.